It's Monday, January the 13th um, at 6.02. We're going to start the facilities, transportation and facilities meeting. Um, and if you would just announce yourself that you're here, I'm, this is Kevin Strobel. Rob Hurley. Kathy Haynes. Frank Cooper. Steve Biggers. Okay. So well, let's, get, let's go ahead and get started, Steve. I'm sorry, say again. You want to go ahead and get started? Oh, sure. Um, <clears throat> the district facilities um, uh, agenda for this week uh, starts with the district office booth at a high school. Obviously, we're here. Um, Uh, <clears throat> so the district office moved to high school is about 95% complete. Uh, the only items lacking are security systems on door 22 and tier doors 1 and 2 to the district offices. Uh, we do have a contract going forward with IT security systems approved. Work should begin this week uh, to put the new key file systems in and uh, along with the security camera, buzz in, and speaker. Uh, you'll be able to buzz in the door. The person can ask you who's there, business, and then they'll be able to buzz in the office. And one other item. Through what, door, through what door would that be then? Door 22. 22. Right. That's the one that proceeds out back towards the gymnasium. Uh, the only other thing uh, lacking is uh, exterior lighting. Uh, Keeler will be installing LED lighting in the back area between the gymnasium and the door to, to brighten the area because it's do we have a cost on that? Um, <coughs> I do, I just don't have it with me. I think the I2 security part was $6,600, which was the fourth group uh, before the move. Um, the lighting is minimal, it should be less than $1,000. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next item on the agenda is high school paving, and that's uh, paving for all buildings. Uh, we met with uh, lawyers uh, last week. They provided us a bid of $9,500 to do the uh, engineering part, and basically that would involve looking at uh, the inlets and the parking lots, any areas where we have concerns, um, and writing up a spec that we can give to prospective bidders. Um, we're hoping to move that forward from March. Uh, bidding, and then uh, paving is on You're hoping to have the bids created before <laughs> February 1st? Because that's what was on my thing here, or are you thinking now March that's bids? That's what we're hoping, but oh, okay. I, mean, I would think until the bidders come out, we have the pre bid March. The last bid, RFP, nobody bid at all. No, they did not because we were not ready and because asphalt plants and stuff was shutting down. Okay. Uh, pricing may work in our favor going okay. forward because it reduces <coughs> from winter to summer. Okay. Um, so you're thinking, you're hoping a February R, uh, announcement for the RFP? Yeah, what, which, which, what that will mean is we'll have to bring this up again to the committee the whole the following. Uh, tonight to get you know, to meet the holes over and over this forward because we don't have to play that committee. Um, moving right. forward with the RFP. The 95 The 95 cost. I got you. For Boyer. So we'll have to bring that in front of the committee. Tonight. Yes. Since we don't have enough to uh, get the right one over the reality. Okay. Well, the next item is the court guard proposal. Uh, this is an item that came up um, from the DP Yearbook Club as they received a donation for $19,650 to improve the courtyard uh, in front of the school building in between the cafeteria and the library. Uh, we had to do some extra issues with that because when you open up an area like that, we're also opening up the fact that people can come in off the street, uh, you lose control of the area, and for security purposes of the building during school hours. So what we looked at was an eight foot vinyl fence. Uh, eight foot? Eight foot. Almond, uh, concrete secured to the ground with dual gate locking system uh, for ease of access and to be opened if there was an event of emergency. Uh, and then two key fob systems installed, uh, one at the library entrance and one at the cafeteria entrance. So the kids, you know, during the day we can open the door, have a secure area where kids can be they can enjoy the outside. I do actually have a diagram of what they're proposing. Um, so that cost will run an additional 11000 but I believe the yearbook committee is looking to donate more money towards that. Um, I, I, got, I was told it was $7,500, uh, but I do not know if that's the firm number. We actually had 
you're going to be biased for the audience. Yeah. Um, so we have another, in addition, should I say, we um, were given an extra, tentatively given an extra $7,500 roughly from the wellness committee. They were able to find a grant to supplement the cost. Um, but there are time constraints on it. So I believe that the wellness grant needs to be spent by the end of March, uh, or, or we lose it. It's not really renegotiable. And then I know the materials for the papers would have gone up January 1st. The contractor was generous enough to hold the cost until the end of January. But if we don't approve it this month, the materials are going to go up. So I, the cost could fluctuate a little bit. But tentatively, we should have enough money to cover the entire thing, or at least you know, that is $7,500. And I'm sure we could work around the general number if we can get the um, so then the difference then would be the between the seventy the eleven thousand thirty five hundred forty six dollars. Thirty five hundred? Yeah. Which we could definitely figure out and and work around the if we could get through the project. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Yeah. Thank you.
it's on the uh, agenda is the BBC boiler expansion tank. Um, the boiler system was replaced about five years ago in that building. It's relatively good shape. Uh, the problem is the expansion tank was never done in the project when they did the boilers. Um, the expansion tank is starting to have fissures inside the inside of the tank plus it's losing pressure. So when it loses pressure, we're not getting enough pressure from the head to the rest of the building to heat properly. Uh, the cost for the expansion tank, because of the size of it, the age of the building, for replacement, repiping, and resetting everything, came in at 19460 from Berkshire Mechanical. Is that something you'll bid out then? It would have to go to bid um, right. due to the cost. I'm sure we would get competitive bids, but I don't know what the price would be for that. Sometimes it's a weird market, you'll get higher. <coughs> And right now the heat does work or doesn't work? It, it just doesn't, doesn't work efficiently? It does work, but it does not work efficiently. And we get a lot of complaints from abundant life uh, because of the heating in the air. <coughs> does this handle the rest of the heating in that building? Because we talked about that building before having issues with the recyclers. Is this not, this is in addition to the recyclers? Yeah. Basically what you have going on is the boilers are more than sufficient to provide the heat for the building. Um, when you have a bad expansion tank and trap system, what basically happens is instead of that constant pressure being in the plate to provide the heat where you need it, it sinks back and it sits in there, condensation builds up, and then you'll get hot, cold, hot, cold, which is what they're experiencing over there. Does it have anything to do with some of the water issues that they're feeling, their dampness? I'm sorry, Does it have anything to do with the dampness that's in that building? I mean, it's. I mean, we were told a bunch of different things. It's not leaking. I mean, there's no standing no, it's, water. It's not leaking, <clears throat> but chances are right now when the pipe's up above in the ceiling, you probably have areas where water has formed in the city, which is very bad for any kind of system like that. And thank God we're treating it, because if we did, we'd probably run the pipes for it. Does it take care of the heat problem over there, so then that heater is good? It should take care of everything. Okay. Can we find that out? <laughs> we'll find out when we, when we get it done. Okay. Yeah, it makes yeah, sense to get a bit. I mean, you need to, the building needs to be maintained. It's got to be heated property. And so we were told that it, I was under the impression it was an entire recycling system. It was a much bigger, nobody brought up the expansion tank in the past. For me, at least, I've only been here two years, so. Um, I would say we have to do the expansion tank because we know we have issues there right. and see what happens afterwards. But I'm pretty sure that that's going to probably take 70% of the problems with the building. That you're going to take out the bid then? Yes, sir. The next item on the agenda is the uh, high school outdoor power washing. Um, so we're already moving on paving um, and a lot of the things to improve the school district plus the courtyard. One of the areas that's been neglected over time is the power washing in the building. If you take a ride around the building and look at the structure on the sides, a lot of the brickwork has mold that's formed and we're getting black stuff coming from the roof. It's basically mold, it's not harmful, but uh, because we're on the north side, on the parking lot side, where staff parks, the south side on this side, the building doesn't look as bad, but you're starting to get runoff, where water runoff has occurred, and mold developing, which really needs to be taken care of. Um, we did get a price from Walters uh, at 11500 to do the whole exterior. Um, I would like to hit all four buildings this summer, the middle school will be the next one that will be a priority. Uh, Interstate does have that in their contract to do power washing. I just don't know that I can pull the crew that I would need to do a building of this size, being the square footage from their crew and still get all the, the cleaning stuff. Needed. Is it included in their bid? Right. So the expense we have to do it, it's going to come out of the money we were going to give them. Is that, is that what I'm hearing? Yes. So this 11.5 is 11.5 we have to contract out, yes. Okay. If we have to contract it out, which they, if they can't handle it, which I'm sure they've been working with you. I mean, they know they're a person short. They've been pretty good about it. But <clears throat> what I would like to do is, is, you know, your approval is to have the middle school price as well, and then try to get NEC and AIC done with interstate. Is it how often is it in our contract for them to actually do it? it it's done not specific in the contract. Um, it is part of the power washing. It just doesn't give a timeline. And generally, like I, I would recommend every two years that we do something like this. Um, being it's, it's going to keep coming back, even if we wash it down. The, 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 the only question I have in regards to something cosmetic, and I know that mold's not 
all cosmetic, but it's on the outside of brick. It's not going underneath anything. So there's probably some effervescence and things like that, which, which is cosmetic. Um, is everything else done? In other words, before we spend the money, again, if it's already contracted and it was an expense that we're going to have on a monthly basis, instead of handing them the money, we hand somebody else the money. I think it's different because it's already in the budget. But, you know, I'm thinking about, like, expansion joints because the ones that are over at BEC are completely gone, you know. So when I walked over there and I see, I'm looking through the wall, I mean, is there things that are around the building that would take precedence over this? Oh, absolutely. You know, because we're spending money on this. I mean, maybe we should spend the money on something else. But maybe that's not covered. So I just I mean, want to make sure we prioritize it. Definitely why I need your input to see where you're pre-sandling these kind of things. In my opinion, I look at it and I go, we're sinking XYZ into new lighting or new parking lots. But then our building looks pure. For, for me, I'm going back to you. You're the facilities person. So you tell me, you tell us what you need to keep these buildings in good shape, you know, because they've been neglected for a while. I agree that I'd like to see them look better and, and all that. If there's a mold issue in an area, maybe it's on the north side of the building where we got to take that side down. If if we're spending somebody else's money to get it done, um, that makes that changes my opinion. And just go ahead and get it done if it's in their contract. They should be doing it anyway. Right. Or would that be added on to what we already spent? So if they didn't do it, we, we wouldn't have to pay them for it, would we? We wouldn't have to pay it. Would have to you know saying, build over. If they didn't do it, we'd have to pay for it. If they didn't do it, we'd have to still pay them for it, right? That becomes a no-brainer to me. We're going to spend the money and either have it done or spend the money and not have it done, then we need it done. But I just want to make sure that, you know, as we go through these, that we, you know, you were going to look at the software and see what we're going to need and walk around and get acclimated to the, all the buildings. Why not? We need to take care of the buildings first. Right. And then, yeah, I agree. Painting, you know, cleaning the walls, making sure things don't, you know, but making sure they don't leak. <laughs> I understand what you're saying. Yeah, that's, where I'm, that's always where I'm at first. That's, you know, so, like level one, level two, level three type of thing. So, yeah, that, again, it's in the contract already, and so it's just a matter of them doing it. So whether they do two this year or one next year, it's money we would have spent anyway, correct? Okay, Roger, understood. Am I understanding that right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's an annual fee we pay them? It's not annual, it's part of their contract. That they, washing was listed as part of the scope of the work they were to perform. That they would perform so, when needed. Right. So it's still, it's still an option. <clears throat> still an option. I mean, if you, again, I'm, okay, I'm good with getting it, you know, done, but can we take a look at, can you tell me that you want to take a, maybe next meeting sure. and then come back and say, this is where this fits in terms of, you know, we've got six other things that really, you know, if we're going to spend $11,500, we probably should do that first. Right. Or do you feel confident that that's, would it, this is, we're good now or? No, yeah. we, can, we can look at it, <clears throat> okay. get more information and we'll put it on our Okay. Now, again, I'm just trying to be practical. Understood. Yeah. We can put that on the next video. Yeah. It's probably good. To, it'd be good to see that stuff anyway. Uh, the next, the next item for discussion is the, the uh, baseball field. Um, so, recently, contractor Halter has been evaluating new fields. I took a ride. <clears throat> we looked at the Optimus field. Uh, there's a lot of concerns with the baseball field. Um, they did a lot of work. Is this one in Birdsboro? The one in Birdsboro, which would be the Legion or Optimus Field across from the They did a lot of work on this this past fall, um, and I'm not taking anything away from what they did, uh, but we still have a water issue there. It's not being. They, they're saying, I went to a meeting Sunday morning with Legion, there's another meeting tomorrow at 5 o'clock with them and, and people from the school um, to discuss what's going on. However, the water is not draining off and the infill has serious conditions. Um, and basically the outfield is kind of swaling that from where they did the work and put the French drain in during the fall. Um, so I made them aware of that at yesterday's meeting. Um, they're confident they can get the field done and ready. However, I'm not so confident that that's going to happen. So what I'm looking to do is prepare you away so we have some more for our play. Um, so our next best, best option would be the field that's currently at the high school here, uh, right outside. Um, the only two issues with that baseball field right now is it does not have a fence and it does not have a school. 
So I'm going to look to see what the cost would be to have a fence installed, temporary, albeit if we need to, and then also get a temporary scoreboard. We, there are options there that would reduce costs. Um, but either way, we need to have a home field for our varsity baseball team. So we're looking at different options. And I just wanted to bring it here and let everybody know. Is the rest of the field up to snuff? So, the field itself is great. I mean, it's draining properly. It's in good, relatively good condition. It has a good backstop. Two dugouts. But um, as far as the field itself, <coughs> over at Optimist, I'm not confident we're going to be able to. How's that fall into right now? We're supposed to do last meeting. We talked about doing some fence repair over there for them. We yeah. have not received it yet. And, and, the, and the yellow cap, washing it down basically instead of replacing it, they originally wanted replaced. Yeah, we have not proceeded with either one. Okay. Um, because of the condition of the field, and we're just not confident, and that would be wasting the, the money for the fence repair. Right. So. Okay. I mean, is it? I don't know all the rules, B-I-C-A-Q-R-Y, I don't know. <laughs> does, does the, the, the temporary scoreboards that you can bring in, are they sufficient enough for us to be in? Yes, in okay. compliance. They're rentable. Um, I found one vendor locally who does do it. I would need to let them know within the next <clears throat> two weeks if that's where we're going to go. So. Better close to home. The other option, and we're not recommending this, is we play all of our games away in the spring if indeed that field is not ready. And again, the American Legion, uh, they are, they said they're going to do everything possible to get it ready. We are not optimistic, and we think they're being overly optimistic. Yeah, like March is coming really fast, and so we're kind of coming out with Plan B here, um, assuming that we're right in what we're seeing out there, because it's like that. I mean, a temporary fence is just that. That's a day. They can have a fence installed and they call the rental company and they come. So you're not planning to do this until the Optimist Club feels that, they, hey, we are not going to be ready. Okay, that exactly. makes sense. Yeah, we want to keep the relationship good. So. We're trying to, and that's what makes it more difficult <clears throat> because I understand that they have very, a lot of pride in that field and they want it to be our home field, and I understand that. But at the same time, you can't put, you know, you can't play on the field, especially. You know, the umpire shows up and says, oh, no, it's forfeit because the field's not ready. Okay. So, to make sure it's safe for our students. Yeah, swale on the outfield's probably not safe. I don't know how deep it is, but it's probably not a good idea, you know. I think I was talking with the halters. They were saying that when it was installed, there were some issues going on, so. Yeah, it's not good. Yeah, it's not good. Okay. Makes sense. <clears throat> The next, item, the next item on the list um, was the middle school. We had a hot water heater that dropped out right before Christmas. Um, that fuels the water heat for the north end of the building in the cafeteria. Um, so had some investigation done, found a lot of issues. Um, issues going back to the water tower itself to the scaling and other stuff. So I just want to bring the attention to that had occurred. I had to make a decision, and I did, to, to repair it. Um, for that <coughs> approval, but I couldn't wait. I can't put people's safety at risk. So that's, that's How much was it? Uh, it came in around $6,000 for the water heater in the tower. And that's a new water heater? The, well, no, the, what you have there is you don't have a traditional tank water heater. You have a water tower that cools the domestic water supply, and it goes through basically an insta-high system. Right. Right. And you know, use this plate uh, to plate heat exchanger. Do they heat it off the boiler? Yes. Yep. Exactly. Yep. So they work great. So it had to yeah. be done. The boiler's hot already anyway, so you're just grabbing it when you need it. Um, it's scaled because they're scaling in that tower, so it's bringing down garbage, right? So did we put a filter in line filter in place we that could be washable? When they came in to clean it, we just scaled the whole thing, filtered okay. the line, ran the system, and then blew it out. Put new belts, new seals, new o rings inside the tower. Right. So it is 100%, and so is the water heater. It's not worth putting a filter on there for the next time it happens? Right. I don't know. Well, I'm going I mean, a filter's cheap. I'm going to tell you that I will do that once a year, as recommended by the manufacturer. I got you. I don't know. I can't speak for the past. I can only. I got you. Um, the other item on there is the hydrant uh, at the middle school. Uh, the back parking lot is you come up the long driveway uh, to the front where we park and staff goes in and the cafeteria entrance. Um, there's a hydrant 
about halfway, which where I think the original design of the building had it going uh, through Country Lane, which is the road that came off 662, and that was supposed to be the front entrance of the building. And right there on the design, there was a hydrant that was installed. Um, the hydrant developed a problem in the last cold snap. Uh, the valving inside would not seat, and water was coming out of it and it froze to the ground. Uh, we had to shut the hydrant down. Uh, so we did that with the assistant and the township. I'm looking at having CE Levan come in uh, to make repairs to that um, hydrant very shortly. So Choice. It, it, the thing and the reason I put it on here is because it's on a meter line, which it's not very common for that to happen. So I'm guessing there was some kind of this, uh, decision made when the building was being built and Anthony Township didn't want the building coming off 662. We actually put that on a meter line. We're going to be looking at options to try to get that taken off a meter line. It should not be on there. I agree. Uh, and if we ever had to use it, 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 it would it would be an expense unbelievable for the district. So that's the right. I'm going to bring that forward as I'm working on that. Um, who are you working with over at the, um, I guess it's Birdsboro, right? Uh, this would be, it would be Pat Moore I've been working with from that okay. township. Okay. And, okay. Yeah, that makes no sense to be on a meter. I'm not sure why. I think it was just, <clears throat> like, the building was opening and, hey, you know. We're short of an income this month. Let's go clean the lines out. Open to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The next, the next item on the list is a five-year plan discussion. Now, these are just these are just items that I would like to see. That, that, you know, I did building inspections. I mean, um, in each building, uh, I'm at least in there once a day in every building. Um, these are items that I came up with in association with the things that are going on. Is that part of? Is that a copy? I uh, know these are just things that I had written in mind. Oh, uh, okay. I can provide you a copy. Though. That's fine. Um, <clears throat> So one of them would be the Annex Loading Dock Rehab. Uh, just paint, ramps for the band, lighting, paint, uh, paint work, fencing, moving to the thick of booth. These are all items that have been considered. I put them on my card to list number one. Um, second would be the removal of the bleachers that we did at the Annex Gymnasium. Um, it'd be nice to see us dedicate some money for the future to try to rehab that gymnasium. Um, to make it nice again, basically. We need floor work, new nets, um, bleachers, if we wanted to utilize it for that, or there are other possibilities that could be discussed. Um, I'm talking with others around the district, everybody has a lot of great ideas that that space can be utilized for. And it's just, I'm looking at it as something that maybe the board moving forward will consider in the future to take a good hard look at it and decide what we want to do to make it a new, more useful space. Um, currently, it does get used for gym class but, um, and baseball. Those are the two and big Some outside groups for the right. Yep. Okay. So, uh, the other one is a plumbing fixture replacement. I know we talked about this at the last board meeting. Um, basically, if you look at the old section of this building, and that would be from bathroom to be D. <laughs> um, faculty bathrooms in between the nurse's office. Um, and the old bathrooms down here, they all have old style handles on there and old style fixtures, including urinals inside there. Um, it would be a cost, it wouldn't be cheap, but I mean, I'm sure we could upgrade one bathroom at a time to put new sensor technologies in there. Basically what I see when I walk through the buildings is I see a lot of these get left open or they'll run because the fixtures and hardware are old and they can be placed and replaced and replaced over time and whatever we have. There could be some savings and water usage there also. Um, being with the high school building, this section's older. It really needs to be considered and put somewhere else on this list to have something to be done. And, um, I think that's one of the things, I don't. I can't speak for everybody else, but for myself, when I look at you know the overall maintenance plan, your five-year plan, right? And having those things that are level one, level two, level three type thing, when you, can, when you look at it, you can say, oh, that makes sense, right? So it might be a level three, and we're ignoring the fact that there's a level one coming. So it's kind of hard. It's easy to say, you know, hey, we need them, and that would be great. But just having that together, I think, and as you, as you start to put, so having that information is absolutely pivotal. It really is. I think it's important. 
Um, and then two, how's that work in the software that you talked about? Because we had talked about um, um, that ML Suites, I guess it is. <clears throat> and putting that in there, I mean, I would imagine that you could be able to print, here's projects, you know, kind of throw some costs against them so we have an idea so we can forecast that expense <clears throat> as you go into each year um, for things that are necessary and then things that, I mean, if they can leave them open, I mean, I don't know what the cost of letting a faucet open for how many, uh, however long it could be open with janitors around, but, you know, something I've to think about. I've actually had discussions on getting rid of ML suites <clears throat> with a different vendor. About whatever the, yeah, I was just using that as an right, example because exactly. that's what we have, you know, yeah, whatever software that we could use to provide Absolutely them. Absolutely, could give you hard annual <clears throat> spending and it's not cheap. As the fixtures get older, it gets harder to find replacements and the cost rises actually. Sure. Paying more for less. I meant just as an overall project cost, you know what I mean? So you just right. kind of have some. I can. I can That'd get be an great. Cost and then I can mine out of that by, by bathroom. Yeah, and, and it doesn't even have to be by fixture. I'm looking for that right. kind of detail because that, that, I, I don't have enough time to read all that, you know what I mean? But right. you're right. So if you have a big, you have a bathroom, you have some things that you want to do, and it's by but it goes in the overall picture, you know. We have a half a million dollars of expense coming. What did we put away for it? You know, what do we have coming? And what are the things that, you know, um, are, are the, like the boiler or that, or that emergency $6,000 rather than keeping money just slid aside so we can always backfill. <clears throat> it gives you a little bit better of a forecast picture, that's all. Yeah, I'd rather do maintenance that way. I hate <clears throat> doing the emergency Maintenance stuff. is much cheaper than repair. <laughs> yes. It really truly is. I agree. And that's, and that's one of the things that Mr. Gregor's staff is working on is that five years he continues to so it's a district to see you know what our, what our priorities are, right. how bad you know some of the items are, or some things are, we can prioritize it, and you know bring that to the board moving forward on what it is we need to do first, second, third. I like I like the idea. I mean, you know, there's always the expense that's always looming over you, but sometimes you know it just makes sense to do. It. You have to do something. So. I, I'm I'm thinking thinking that if we put some money out on investment, you know, we like we did get. Two test lights in each school district up. The two here at the far end of the staff parking area before you go out to Gary Road. There's two that are already changed to Valley LED. The contractor gave them to us basically and installed them for free because he wanted to get an idea of what we thought. So um, he's got two that are installed right at the NEC, right out the front near the flagpole. Uh, two at the middle school in the back on the parking lot side where the main entrance is. And then two at the AIC, uh, right across from the main entrance there as well. Um, it's much brighter. You're talking at one third cost of what it would cost us to keep electric. Um, uh, you had me hello on LED. I've replaced all of our buildings with LED, but it took time. We had to forecast it in and say, okay, you know, here's the expense, here's our payback, and we rolled it out in pieces. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, and the length of the time that they burn. I mean, just there's just a yeah. lot of benefits there. So. You're basically saying one third of the cost of what we're paying right now for high pressure sodiums. High pressure sodiums run two years and then you have to replace them. You can get five to nine at the LED, which is replacement cost savings. Yeah, they're coming down nine. too. They it really are. It down, puts more money back in the school. And the same thing with the plumbing. Every bathroom you redo, less water usage. Because one thing that's a pet peeve of mine is walking in and seeing a handle stuck up or a water running. It drives me crazy, so I see that as like things in my head constantly. Take some uh, WD-40 around with you, no. <laughs> I wish it was any. I'm kidding. <laughs> I know you can't get inside that fixture with it. I was just kidding. <laughs> um, so the next uh, item on the agenda is interstate. Um, cleaning services, I know this has been a topic of discussion at past board meetings. Um, Basically, we're resolved to work with them to try to get through the problems that we have. Um, there have been manpower issues. There have been issues with dirty buildings. I'm now doing building inspections in each building each week, which I turn into Mr. Early, and then we have meetings along with the contractor to look for improvement. Um, they have been very responsive as of late. There's been some supervision issues um, with them. They've admitted it needs to be addressed. Um, we're working on a game plan to try to get them more tests. Um, it's, it's deja vu. Yeah. The last company did the same exact thing, and and Casey spent a lot of time running around trying to go behind and manage what we're paying them to manage, and so 
<coughs> yeah, no offense, but the other, and you, I don't, you weren't here before it, but the other company made bigger promises than they did. It was a little bit different money and all that and stuff, and I get it. We went local, but when we our first meeting we went to, they were short, and then the, the guy said that you know they were kind of hamstrung too. They were promised they could come in on evenings and weekends to make up for their shortfall, and they weren't allowed. So, kind of gave them a get out of jail free on that one. But <clears throat> if they can't keep, if they can't fulfill our contract. We are wasting our time and money trying to get them to do something they can't do. And they need to hear that. We're going to not use them. There's other options for us. Contract or no contract, they're not fulfilling their contract. That's a breach. And so it's crazy for us to keep putzing around with it. I mean, I remember Aaron Spores coming with a list on a spreadsheet <clears throat> for all the crap that was in this building. I, I, was, I was shocked by it, to be honest with you, that we would take somebody that has other things to do and we're dealing with that. And again, thank God he had the energy and desire to do it because he cared. But we can't keep going down that path. And I know it's not your fault. I'm just saying we need to send that message strong to them because he's not here. He should come to this meeting. Maybe we should have him come to the next meeting, you know, um, so they can hear it straight from, you know, they just think. Well, we one-site managers here, Lori. Okay. Um, Lori Craig, she's the one-site one manager. And I have seen improvement. And we're developing a good relationship to try to get things moving. And they've been very responsive as of late, um, doing deep clean scenarios where it hasn't been hit. But we do have a very long way to go, and management and shortfalls on manpower may be. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I, again, to those that are here, appreciate what you do. I get it. But it's like anything else. If I come to build your house and I don't have enough here, people to put the heater in, and you want to move in on January, I'm sorry, it's now March. Where are you living? It's a business in endeavor, so it's really not something that you know. It's, this isn't. I feel good because I like you. This is. This is the contract. <clears throat> you have we to fulfill. Sold. Very, hundred percent. Very much, hundred percent. We we're going to have people in each <clears throat> building. It was like management, management, management. It was going to be, you know. Really it's, so it, again, I just uh, I know it's not you, and I don't, if it sounds like we're throwing it at you, Stephen, I apologize. That's not my no, intent. Okay. I, I, I think I think they need, and if, again, if, if it can't get resolved in a timely fashion, because when we first met, when school first opened up, I remember sitting there talking to the gentleman. I said, he said, "This is on me." I'm like, "Okay, I'm good with that. I do that all the time in my company." But then get it done, and he didn't get it done. So if they if they don't have it done by next time we meet. I think he should come. He needs to come and stand at that podium and tell us what he's going to do to fix it and then come follow through with it because it's just not right. And I don't care about bringing the money back. Taking the money back means we got to go out and get other contractors. It's all the same stuff that we didn't want to do. It's not why we hired them. <clears throat> you know, they can, pay, they can pay for all the work that's being done. Pay us for the time preparing to get the work done because that's really the loss of income. I mean, does this make sense? Yes, sir. <clears throat> you don't want to be that way with them, but, you know. Maybe it's time we'd be that way with them. Rob, we have the same issues <clears throat> that you you were more familiar with before. Similar issues? It, it's ever seen it right on target. Um, there's there's some manpower issues, there's some issues surrounding um, some management related issues. Um, they they've been put I know they were put on a strict deadline to get this taken care of um, within 30 days or else. And I know that caffeine is also from a financial standpoint is is um, not paid them uh, for some of the services they failed to render to the school district. I, I don't think it's a loss of money, it's a loss of service. Right. That's the key. So again, I, I don't want to be labor, and I know we're already over time, and I apologize, but... <clears throat> um, it, the next meeting is 650. Hmm? The next meeting is 650. Uh, the next meeting is 650, okay, so we got My 10. My thought is I want a company that's going to be successful, because it makes my job easier, and it makes the district better. And Right now, we're not getting that. They're well aware of how we feel. So I get a phone call from the guy that came to every single meeting, okay, <laughs> that bid on it, didn't win the bid. I get a call from him every month prior to when it started. He called me like two months after we started, and I said, listen, you got to stop calling me. We're in, we, we've already married. Let's, we're moving forward, okay, because that was the decision. Because in the beginning, we were going to unplug the whole thing again really don't want to deal with the problems. There's other things we need to do with our time, money, and effort, right? So we didn't want to be, but you know, the concept, the, the consensus was, we're going to stay, and we're going to go, here we are. It's January. Same stuff. So this so can't, can't be groundhog. It's a lot different at my club. 
<coughs> and here but we hired a new Indian company and one of the ladies that was actually interesting when she did walked around with me, she goes, which I, I was trying to come up with a word, but it was like how we don't want to police we don't want to police the cleaning company. And and that was I thought that was perfect. It was like they described it. You, you you shouldn't have to be doing all this extra work. I mean that's what we paid them for. That's what they sold us on. That young lady got up there and gave us the whole spiel and the whole team came up and gave a hug and um, it yeah. Again, I think we I think we I don't want to overbeat it, but I, they need to hear the message that really not interested in hearing why or I'm sorry or an excuse because there's a you know where there's a glaring issue and problem right now for me is we're still at fifty percent on our maintenance staff. Right. So rather than providing four, we only have two. And it has really put us on a maintenance backlog of what needs to get done and I, I can demand and demand demand but I can't demand yeah. the people for yeah. other properties if I remember correctly in the yeah. area that could yes. bring yes. over to help and, out. And selfishly my my thing is is just take ahead. somebody from there. Let somebody else you know you don't want to be that way but <laughs> I will. I'll send out an email for them to come to the next Mr. Show. Show. Thanks. I agree. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> yeah, no. I, you know, it's just, again, it's just it's just business. It has nothing to do with personality. Oh, okay. It's all business. It is. I'm sorry. So the last thing on the list is looking forward for maintenance, uh, preventive maintenance work at all building. Um, I'm happy to say all the filters did get changed. Uh, the all HVAC units. Um, we're looking and monitoring. I'm getting information as we go along. Stuff that will stick in our system so that we have tracking. Um, basically, we're we'll looking at a new CMMS. If we do get a new CMMS, I want something that's going to get us predictive. So we'll be able to, like every three months, it'll print out and say, hey, you know, HR1, unit HR1 needs a new uh, filter. Um, on schedule, this way we can predict our costs going forward, reduce our running repair, emergency costs, you know, just to get things back to where they need to be. Um, we have taken care of all of our boiler heating issues for this winter. Um, and starting February 15th, we will be preparing for summer. <laughs> I'm just knocking on the wood. <laughs> it's a good day. <laughs> no one was sweating more than me. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> and the new TM, TMSS, I mean, if you take a look at it, again, we talked about this last time. If you don't like MS Suites, I don't have to use it. Right. You do. so. If you, yeah. don't, if you don't like Excel and you want another brand, if you want Sheets and Google I Sheets. I have actually six of them that have been calling me that say they can give me what I want. I've done two webinars, uh, three webinars. Let's see if we can save some money. Yeah. That would be awesome. <laughs> I have another one tomorrow to do okay. another one. So okay. uh, we'll make the decision based on that. And then I'll it, it should be easy other. for building soup people to put something in so that you don't have to communicate. Over email there systems phone. out there that I like that can show you what people are working on because you actually scan it to where it's at. So it gives us an idea and we can see live with what's going on. Okay. So. I do have one additional item. Okay. Yep, I do. Ready? Yep. Um, okay. Are, are you done all your Are things? you done? That's it. That's okay. It. Yeah. I have um, the lease of the Birth Grove building by the church. They are asking for more space in the front office. And then the also the Birdsboro Fitness and Splash is looking for more space, and I need the okay. Can I start getting lease agreements together? Is is this that time? Um, we talked about you know the cost to keep in that building and our enrollment, and we've been talking about the need for the buildings and whatnot. And um, I think, you know, I think we really should probably do a, a deep dive and gather some, garner some more information because if we're going to change the lease, the last time we did the lease, there were some challenges in that. Um, yeah, that we can, and I've talked with the church, Devin, mm -hmm. and he does not want to change the current lease, and we cannot because of the way that it was written. We can't change it. No. We can add the additional space on a separate lease. But because he doesn't want to, or because it's not, I mean, we can change anything. Just because he doesn't want to doesn't mean that we're not going to negotiate that. Well, and I've had, <coughs> I've had the conversation with him, and okay. and he's in the audience right now. Okay, that's great. We, we, we can talk about that. I mean, I, I'm all for the usage of it, but 
the last lease didn't go the way, you know. And there's other options, and I don't want to alienate. There's other options we talked about that I'm not, I don't think we should. Certainly, uh, we are playing this against the air. If, if you, you want to come up and speak to um, you know, the intent of uh, the space you're looking to lease additionally. Yeah, we, we uh, saw it, Chuck. Yeah, we talked um, back when we leased the space originally that we might want to lease the offices. And we've been in touch with Kathy and said, hey, you want us to lease the offices? Pretty much ready to do that, um, but if you guys don't, it's okay. Well, we're very happy with where we're at. So. Well, I think we need to talk about it. I mean, there's other things we want to talk about too, as well, um, that may be beneficial for all parties. I just don't think that we're prepared to have that conversation now. So, so then you want to you want us to further discuss adding an addendum? That was the original conversation we had about adding an addendum to the current lease and just adding the square footage to the current price. So it's not out of the realm. But it's not out of the realm, but I think we should talk about it before like, making a decision now to move forward with that. But I'm not opposed to that at all, but I just want to talk about a few other things that we had con some concerns with that I think we should address them while we're doing this. And it, it may be one of them things, well, we don't need it that bad, you know, and I get that, that but we don't want that relationship either. We want to try and keep it good. Sure. That's, not my, that's not the message I'm sending. I know it may sound like that way, but there's some, there were some challenges with the lease in the past. So. Just, it's all good. I think there's other options that we may have that we can present. And I think if everybody sits down, which we should be able to sit down, that we can come up with. Well, that would be a good thing if we all sit down at some point. <clears throat> That's always the easiest. Yeah, yeah I agree. Always. Yep. Because it's a good thing. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, That's all I really have. You had last time with the elevators and the Black River Banner program and fire systems and all that. That's all it's under. Still in progress. <clears throat> and you had talked about um, um, being able to um, have an emergency contract. contract. Where are we at with that? I don't think we all agreed on that yet. We're um, still. I'm working on my 2020, 2021 budget. Okay. Um, and I'm trying to work with the scenes to get that. Uh, she's, she's going to help me just get myself turned down here. Okay. Okay. I'll let them in the shade. Don't worry. All right. And we're right on time. <laughs> Anything else? No, sir. Okay. Um, that concludes our meeting.